There is a lot of connection between horse and man. You have to understand the horse. You know, let it be him. Don't try forces to do something you want to do. You bond with them and you watch them grow and you watch them develop like young children. I have that touch with the horse, that gift that God gave me with the horse to understand the horse. This is not a job for me. This is uh, my therapy. Horses teach you on a constant basis. Once you think you've seen it all, there comes one out of the blue and it's like, wow, where did that come from? Being able to get a horse to a big race, even if you've got this plan, maybe months ago, many factors can come in. The Woodbine Oaks itself is into its 68th running. It has a tremendous history of producing some fantastic fillies, and I do think that at the nine furlong distance, it's a test of stamina, of early speed, and a jockey's race in terms of positioning. Owners are looking to see if they can take the major half million dollar prize, and it's certainly on the line today. Hi, my name's Scott Lane. I'm the racing secretary up here at Woodbine, and we're getting ready to do the post position draw for the Woodbine Oaks. The Oaks, Fly Show Free, Ashley B. Campos, Big Brass Bed Franco, Elysian Field Savachi, Wickenheiser, Kimura. So obviously when you're, when you're drawing for post positions and big fields, I think it's more pivotal what position you get in the starting gate. You don't want to be in the gate for a long time. Some horses may be a little shy on the inside, so you want them to draw further out. When you have more than one, you're treating each one as an individual. Uh, obviously what makes one tick that doesn't necessarily make the, the next one. You have to kind of just separate them, try to uh, do what's best for each one individually. And at the end of the day, the best horse is going to win, whether it's one of ours or somebody else's. Fashionally Fab Hernandez, 45-70 Munger. Tito's calling Contreras. We've been fortunate to win the Oaks uh, in its last two runnings. Obviously we're going for a three-peat this year. Um, this year we're coming in as a bit of an outsider, I think. You know, we're not holding the hot hand. Uh, but I'm still uh, very optimistic of our chances. We've got four uh, candidates that are headed that way and they're all doing really well. We're hoping that obviously uh, one of them steps up and uh, comes up with a lifetime best and uh, gives us uh, a natural hat trick, I guess. Okay. Kevin Attar comes from a racing family. He's certainly learnt it from a young age. He's experienced in terms of uh, bringing horses to their peak on the right day. He's had a lot of success recently. His barns expanded because he's attracted a lot of very uh, well uh, experienced owners, uh, well moneyed owners really, because you need to be able to spend money to get good quality horses and he's attracted that. We think Kevin Attard is suddenly uh, one of our greatest trainers we've ever had. Come down to the finish line, it is Fozzie Bear, an easy winner of the Clarendon Stake. Fozzie Bear leads him through the stretch. I think one of my first real memories of horse racing is uh, back in 1986, my dad had a horse by the name of Fozzie Bear. His first lifetime race, he, he won, uh, broke a track record, and then he went on to win five consecutive stake races as a two-year-old. And you don't see many young horses be as precocious as that. Uh, so that was definitely one of my uh, kind of fondest memories as a young child. The Atards are notorious with horse racing in Ontario. Me being born into it, uh, it, it's obviously something I take a lot of pride into. Woodbine's been our home for the whole Atard family. Obviously, uh, we've made a, a career and a living uh, supporting our families, you know what I mean, through working here uh, at Woodbine Racetrack. I mean, there's a lot of pride, obviously, that goes into it. You know what I mean? My father, my uncles, they were all successful beforehand, so it kind of strives to make me better and want to be better. Come on, Louis! Come on, Louis! Big in, Louis! I respect him like a person and like a trainer. He's so professional. He's a nice, great guy outside the business. You know, even he got his dad, he was a trainer, but they don't give him nothing like in the table, you know? He had to work for what he got. 
you know? And I respect that. There's a lot of hard work and dedication. It's hard on your family life because you spend so many hours of the day here at the racetrack, you know? Uh, and in the afternoons we race, on the weekends we race. So it's definitely uh, very difficult in that sense and you have to be very uh, dedicated and motivated. It's, it's a hard job. You have to put a lot of effort and time into it. The mighty filly has devastated them and the 163rd Queen's Plate is a big win for Moira. She is stunning, wins six lengths. I was very optimistic about her chances for, for the Queen's Plate early on. I just knew she was a good horse and uh, I knew the distance wasn't gonna be an issue. And I just, for some reason, she had shown me so much that I was very confident in her abilities. And sure enough, you know, she, she dominated the boys, set a track record, and, you know, gave me my first Queen's Plate win. Luke, Raphael Hernandez, Kevin Attard, the connections here on Moira. It's a dream come true. When I first landing here, I was looking forward to win a Queen's Plate. For be the first Queen's Plate for Kevin and me, is special. It's so much special. I still watch it re uh, replays. You know, when I when I can, I go to YouTube for the Queen's Play. <laughs> I still watch it replay. I still have a feeling when I when I see the replay across the wire. You know, it's a great feeling. I think Raphael has a good sense of pace. He can judge uh, how fast they're going up there and if the pace is too slow, he can dictate it if he's on the lead. And I think that's uh, a key in being a good rider. When he's out there, he's calm, he's usually collected, and uh, I think horses thrive off of that. Raphael's very experienced. I mean, he's come through a lot of different circuits to come to Canada. Raphael has a great sense of, of timing. He has uh, a very good sense of how to finish on a horse in a race. And he really understands to maintain that type of level at the top, which has made him a champion. I started from my home, Puerto Rico. It was great. It was great because I, I remember my dad, one of his friends, wanted money to him. So my dad told him, oh, you got a horse and you owe me money. So <laughs> give me that horse. And I was just riding every day, every day. I love it. You know, I come uh, one year here, 2015, and I win the Queen's Play with Chairman Goals. I will start coming more often, and uh, I start looking at the place. You know, it's beautiful racetrack and everything. Uh, people, it was amazing, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna take a chance. A lot of ups and downs, you know, and uh, it's hard to get there, or be consistent is harder. I tell you, uh, jockeys about all the work. We small guys, but big heart. I tell you, a lot of people don't know how big heart we have. We do this because we love the game. We love the adrenaline. <laughs> he's a great rider, and he's a great person more so than anything. When you go into the paddock, you feel calmness. It's assuring to kind of walk into the paddock and know that uh, the jockey is as confident as you are. Before the gates open, I just try to be more relaxed I can, you know, more calm I can, because I feel you transmit that to the horse. You know, if they feel you, you, you fear, they're gonna do whatever they want with you. When you're in the top of the horse, you can feel the heart. So you know if they're calm down, they're nervous. If they're nervous, you have to be relaxed. So you can transmit that to the horse and everything's gonna be all right. Definitely, I think Rafi and I feel a special bond. You know, he's a great rider and he's a great person more so than anything. Raphael's gonna ride Bachelet Fab this year for the Oaks. If she were to win, who knows what the possibilities would be then, but she's doing well and we're excited to see her run. It's a rainy day for racing here at Woodbine. We are getting set for the 68th running of the Woodbine Oaks. It was okay, you know, the plan, it was uh, my horse, definitely when it's gonna show its speed, come from short. Kevin told me just roughly just break and let it be what he wanted to be. Locked up. And they're off. 
And one of the best away, Big Brass Bed over on the inside and Ticket Tape Home Deep on the track coming floating towards the lead with Fashionably Fab, who's run to the front. He was comfortable the first, you know, full on, but after that, the horse was uh, inside me, he was bumping me, bumping me uh, all the time, so my horse never settled down really good. He was kind of uncomfortable. I tried to get him relaxed, but the soon he, he bumped me a couple times, the horse inside, he was ready to go, right? So it was hard to rate him and relax him. At last is Great Kate racing together. Friends for life on the inside of the half mile ahead to Fashionably Fab and only a length away, ticket tape home jogging along. Uh, rating the horse is kind of uh, keep the horse relaxed. It, it was hard because the other horse was kind of in bottom me, bump, bumping me. So my horse was kind of on the bridle all the time. And as they come for the home stretch, Tito's calling third, then Fashionably Fab and Elysian Field down the outside. Wickenheiser running on with Big Brass. Damn, brother! Elysian Field is coming. Elysian Field on the outside. This stable mate and has run to the front. Wickenheiser down the outside and Big Brass bed. Elysian Field in front. Out wider, Wickenheiser. Elysian Field clear. Wickenheiser now the center. Drifting, but Elysian Field. Sahin Sabachi wins the Woodbine Oaks. Two and a half lengths. Wickenheiser second. 45 70 third. Me and my shadow fourth. Then ticket tape home, big brass bed, fly so free, Ashley B, Courtley Row, and behind them, fashionably fab collect dad, Tito's calling great, Kate Delphia, and last friends for life. Things sometimes don't go the way you want it, but that's racist. That's what we call it, whole races. Never know what happened during the race, right? So, yeah, that was another result we wanted, but keep the head up and turn the page and get the next one. Yeah, definitely. You have to have thick skin. Uh, it's uh, very challenging. Uh, it's not easy to win. A lot can go wrong. Sometimes you have the best horse and it doesn't necessarily uh, transpire to a win. Every race is different race. Every horse is different. Every situation is different. So all you have to do is just leave it that back and keep going, looking forward. Never look back. You know, mentally you have to be strong and you have to kind of realize that tomorrow's a new day and uh, you, you hope to come back and maybe uh, things didn't go well for you today, but the next day uh, it'll transpire to a better better day. He's a great trainer. I learned him from him and he can do, he can make a horse really, really good, you know, and he can consistent, that's the main thing. You never stop learning in this industry. I think you have to have an open mind and, uh, you know what I mean, you just kind of listen to what everybody tells you.